So there's an expression going around that a lot of people are using when it comes to striking and it's slip and rip. So I had a couple of people ask, can you show me some slip and rip examples? Let's first cover what it means to slip, how to do it properly, and then we'll give you different options that you can do to counter follow up after that slip. So slipping punches is done when Vince is throwing straight punches at me. So a jab or a cross, and I'm taking my head off the center line, slipping to the outside. Ideally, I want to try to slip to his backside, meaning if Vince throws a jab, I'm slipping to look at his back. Yes, I can slip to the inside to go here. You can see Felix Trinidad uses a lot. You come back with a left hook or a left uppercut, but just know that it's risky because if Vince throws a jab cross and I slip to the inside, here comes that cross and I'm running right into it. Ideally, I want to slip to the outside of Vince's cross, right? So he throws the cross, I'm getting to the outside, I'm looking at his back. The ideal situation is to get to the backside but know that if you do slip to the inside of a punch, you're not necessarily uh, in a bad position. You just have to be quick with your follow-up strike, follow-up attack. But one thing that I like to do is, if I do slip to the inside, and there's a jab and I slip to the inside, is I like jamming up his cross hand so that he can't throw it. So when, we, when I teach slipping and when, when you practice your slipping, is you wanna make sure that you are keeping your opposite hand up and protecting your head as a layer, an, an added layer of defense just in case. Because what will happen is oftentimes you'll slip and your hand will go down here like this. But if I misjudge, I think it's a jab and it's really a cross and I go here, bang, Vince is going to catch me with that. Whereas if I slip and my hands are up, now I'm protected and I have this block that's built into my defense. So you will notice that when your hands are low, it's a counterweight and a counterbalance and you do move a little quicker and you're able to pull yourself back. You're, you're making yourself a little bit more top heavy when your hands are up. But all that means is that you just have to practice it more often, build up those muscles, and make sure that your feet are in proper position when you slip. So when Vince throws a jab and I slip to the outside, I also like to, to move my foot. So if I'm moving to my rear side, my right side, then I'm gonna move my right foot as I do it. So I slip out here. This is also a good way for me to cover distance and get a little bit closer. So I slipped and I got a little closer. Maybe I wanna get even closer to throw a, an uppercut. This isn't gonna land from here, but if I bring my left foot in when I do it, there's that rip. So I slip. And then step in and I rip the uppercut. You can also throw a, a right hand over top, right? So I slip from over top with that right hand. And that movement right there, I call it the zigzag because I'm going out and I'm coming back in in a zigzag motion. So my right foot steps out, now my left foot steps in and I come back into the shot. I can also slip, again, Vince's right hand. So he throws the cross, slipping to the outside, and then I can throw the body shot. I can throw the uppercut. Uh, I can also come over top. Uh, with that with that lead hook. So there's a couple of different options when you're slipping and you come back with your counter punch. But just remember to keep that in mind that your head's getting off the center line by compressing or tilting the upper body. And you will feel that skin fold, that crunch in the oblique when you do that. Um, but I also like to move my feet as I do it so that my head is supported over that foot. Whereas if I'm here, I might be a little bit too top heavy. It might be too hard for me to come back for my counter shot. And just know that timing is super important with this too. A ton of people tend to admire their, uh, their ability to slip or the fact that they slipped something. So Vince throws a jab and they'll be like this, oh awesome, I slipped the punch. Well, here comes Vince's follow-up shot and he's gonna catch me there. So again, you gotta be thinking three steps ahead. So once I slip that punch, what's my counter there? So I slip and I'm coming right back. There's no hesitation in between. A good way to get your uh, partner, your sparring partner or your opponent to throw something that you want is to throw that exact strike. So if I want Vince to throw a jab because I want to slip it, I'll hit him with a jab first. So I go boom, he goes, oh right, I'm going to throw a jab. Now I hit my slip and I come right back. I want him to throw the right hand, so I'll go boom, power right hand. He goes, ooh, you want to trade power? I get him to throw it, I'm expecting that, and then I evade it and then come right back in to slipping that shot. Now one last one I'm going to share here is, uh, is kind of combining the two is I was showing getting to the outside and then coming back with that same side strike. But let's say I slip to the inside on Vince's jab and I also throw a right hand. This is one that Andy Sauer would use very often back in the K1 days and knock tons of people out with it. When Vince throws his jab, if he just extends his arm out, um, it's, it's a threat. I have to be wary of that, but he's also exposed. The moment you throw any strike, you're exposed. The body's exposed and the head is exposed. If I can slip my head to the inside, and also throw an overhand right. This is a great position here, a great way to counter the jab. So when Vince throws that jab, bang, I'm coming right over top of the shoulder, putting pressure onto the lead leg, and I'm combining the slip and the rip together, right? So that's a slip, that's a rip while slipping. <laughs> there you go. All right, so there's a couple uh, slip and rip options for you there. Gotta practice in shadow boxing. 
so that you can incorporate it into your sparring so that you can then use it successfully in competition. All right, be sure to subscribe to get the fight tips before your opponent does. Until then, I'm Shane. Fancy Anomaly. Fight tips for the underdogs.